Greetings my brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. Today my topic is fresh wine skins. My brothers and sisters, we all heard the passage how Jesus tells the people of his time and tells us through the word of God that fresh wine has to be poured in fresh wine skin. If we pour the fresh wine in the old wine skin, then when the fermentation happens, it will burst the old wine skin. My brothers and sisters, let us look at what this old wine skin is. If you look at the ancient times, especially in the Jewish custom, what we have, the Jewish people used to have wine as a kind of a regular drink and they used to store the wine in the wine skins the skins from the animals and then like a, it is made like a bag and then they will pour that wine but before they do that the skin is treated they do all kinds of treatment to that skin and then they pour it so when the fresh wine is poured, after the treatment, the wine, when it gets fermented, as it becomes older and older, the fresh skin can expand, can be flexible because it's flexible and it expands. But once that wine is consumed, and if that skin is not used for some time, it becomes very brittle and it becomes very hard. To once again make it fit to hold wine. So what they used to do is they have to do a lot of, you know, again treating that with, you know, to make it soft because it will become hard. So they want to make it, they would make it uh, soft and they will make it with oil and different kinds of treatments. So that once again it becomes a wine skin, a fresh wine skin. But those days, the old once the wine skin, once the new wine is formed, they used to have new wine skins because it was a constant repetition of their thing. They would hunt animals, kill animals, use the animals skin for making this uh, wine skins, and then use to store wine. But here we find many biblical scholars. When you read some of them, their commentary about this wine skin, you would find that the wine skin is our own selves. If we have to receive God's message, we need to be that fresh wine skin, taking God's word as God's word becomes deeper and deeper and deeper. We should have that capacity in our heart and mind grow dynamically towards our creator God so even whatever words as we as the word of God comes into us deeper and deeper we need to also be growing the capacity going more closer to God slowly leaving all our earthly things which is not what the word of God tells us so slowly when we leave everything then we become that new fresh wineskin, receiving the word of God and we expand and we expand and we expand as the word of God finds its place in our hearts and in our minds which is reflected in our interactions with our fellow human beings. Today we'll see from scriptures how the wine is something similar to the word of God which can give us the joy, which can give us that happiness, which can give us that continual fermentation so that we should keep our capacity increasing slowly, slowly, slowly. Just like a musician, if he wants to become the best pianist, he needs to practice, 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 practice. So if we have to imbibe the word of God within ourselves, we need to have that capacity 
So we'll see from the wineskins how the wineskins give us that illustration of taking God's word within ourselves. Now, in Matthew chapter 9 verses 14 to 17, in Mark chapter 2 verse 18 to 22, and in Luke chapter 5 verse 32, 39. In all these three Gospels, the wineskin is been used as our human person and then how we can take the word of God. Now when you look at Psalm 119 verse 83, for I have become like a wineskin in the smoke, yet I have not forgotten your statues. My brothers and sisters, Psalm 119 is the biggest uh, psalm, longest psalm. Now we find, for I have become like a wineskin in the smoke. My brothers and sisters, even when we become wineskin, we keep absorbing when it's used fully. The wineskin is again put to a kind of a treatment. Even in those circumstances, I still cling on to the statues of our Creator God. Let's look at Paul's letter to Titus chapter 2 verse 3. Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanders or slaves to much wine. They are to feed what is, they are to feel what is good. They are to feed what is good. Now, older women, they need to be examples to the younger women. They should not drink. They should not have too much wine. Now here we find that wine is an intoxicating drink. So if when we drink wine, we get intoxicated. But older women, they should not get intoxicated with wine. Rather, they should be filled with the word of God. So that they can be a great example for the younger women. How the word of God can be imbibed and contemplated and proclaimed. Luke chapter 5 verses 37 to 39. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must put in fresh wine skins and no one after drinking old wine desires new. For he says the old is good. My brothers and sisters, this is a very classic example of how the Pharisees, the Herodians, the scribes, the Sadducees, fail to recognize the new wine of Lord Jesus, the new revelation of Lord Jesus. They always felt the commandments given to them, the Mosaic law was good enough for them. And they wanted always, they had become that old wine skin, which was so brittle and which didn't want to be smoked or done any kind of treatment. They just wanted the old stuff. Oh, I will only follow it. the mosaic law. They don't want to listen to Jesus who is not even 30 years old and he claims to be the one who existed before Abraham. No, we have Father Abraham. We will stick on to him. So Jesus tells them that if you want to take the new wine, the new word, what I am giving it to you, you need to Cleanse yourself and become like a fresh wineskin to take that new wine. Now Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. My brothers and sisters, this new wine, it's not the gift what we get because of our good works. And this is what the point which the Pharisees and the people of the time of Jesus did not realize. They thought it is because of their good works, because of following the laws, the commandments of God, they can reach heaven. But Jesus tells them it is not. And that's what is reflected here by Paul when he writes the Ephesians. 
For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Now John chapter 8 verse 58, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. My brothers and sisters, if you go to Exodus, Moses asks at the burning bush, What is your name, the God's name? And God says, I am who I am. Father of Abraham, father of Jacob, father of Isaac. That's how he says. He says, I am who I am. And here we find in the Gospel of John, Jesus telling, before Abraham was, I am. So Jesus existed. He doesn't have any past or he is always, he is. I am who I am. Now Luke chapter 10 verse 34. We find he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. So my brothers and sisters, this Samaritan man who saw this wounded person, a victim of the brigade. So this person was wounded and he was lying down and nobody bothered to care for him. But this Samaritan woman, a Samaritan uh, man, he went, bandaged this Jewish person and then took him to an inn and placed him there. And Jesus explains them. So this is the new wine he is giving. This is the new meaning of who is my neighbor. It is not just helping your own people. It is not just helping your own community. It is not just helping your people of your own nationality. It is not just helping your people of your own race. It is for any human person. And that's what is the new law. And that's what is the new wine. And we need to be prepared as fresh wineskin to receive that message of love. Luke chapter 7 verse 33. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine. And you say he has a demon. So the Jew Jewish people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they were so clinging to the Old Testament laws that anyone who was not drinking even a bit was li living a life in, in the desert eating wild locusts and honey. They said he has a demon because he is not eating like, just like them. He is not doing the tithing, neither he is following the law of Moses. So they said he has a demon. But Jesus tells them, when he came drinking, they called him a glutton. But Jesus said that the new wine which he is giving, he is just revealing the Old Testament. That the Old Testament was only talking about him. That is about love. So whatever you do in love, not only to your own community, to your own family, to everyone who is created in the image and likeness of God. Luke chapter 1 verse 15. For he will be great before the Lord and he must not drink wine or strong drink and be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. My brothers and sisters, John the Baptist is the greatest prophet. This is from the mouth of Lord Jesus himself because he is the only person who gets the Holy Spirit right from the womb. So among children born out of a woman, this is the truth. He is the greatest. And he was told that he will never touch wine and that's why he doesn't drink wine. Now Mark chapter 14 verse 25. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. This is the Passover happening here in the gospel of Mark chapter 14 when Jesus tells when he has the four cups according to Jewish practice 
he doesn't he says the last cup he won't drink he would drink only in the kingdom of god excuse me job uh, job 32 verse 19 behold my belly is like wine that has no vent like new wine skins ready to burst so job was so faithful to god that he was always a new wine skin but his sorrow was so much that he was even ready to burst imagine a new skin new wine skin bursting we can never remember the old wine skin will burst if you put a fresh wine but a new wine skin will never burst but here we find job the sorrows of job the sufferings of job was so severe that he is comparing to a wine poured in a new wine skin and that wine skin is about to burst Genesis chapter 9 verse 21 He drank the wine he drank of the wine and became drunk and lay uncovered in his tent This is the story of Noah Noah after the flood he comes out with his children three children and the youngest one you know finds like Noah he plants a vineyard grows grape makes wine and then he's happy he is the only family with his three sons and their wives so after drinking wine he is so intoxicated that he just lies naked so when the third son the youngest son looks at his father's nakedness he laughs at it then when he noah realizes later we know what happens he curses god but then the point to note here is the wine how it intoxicates a person even not understanding that the person is naked so if we know that wine can make this person that's why john the baptist the greatest prophet he did not touch wine he had lived only on locusts and wild honey but if he was intoxicated he would have suffered as well in a different story would have been different now in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation all things are passed away behold all things have become new my brothers and sisters this is what exactly is happening during our baptism we are pushed into the water we are blessed with the water then anointed with oil and then in fire god's holy spirit comes on the baptized person and whoever has been baptized he is a new creation in god he doesn't have to be reborn again he has been baptized whether as a child or as an adult adult going through this process of getting down into the water immersing completely and then rising and then being anointed with the oil and then in the presence of the fire the holy spirit the baptized person becomes a priest prophet and a king once wine skin is emptied it becomes dry hard and brittle they need to be submerged in water for a period of time then massaged with oil to renew it and make it pliable again and that's what happens in the baptism when a person the old wine skin as an adult the person is getting baptized if he is coming to, if he wants to be reborn he comes to lord jesus christ and he is baptized by immersing that person in the water and then anointing with oil and then the promise of renewal and then he becomes a new person and that is the born again we find that in all the three gospels the importance to wine 
is given. But when you look at the fresh wine skin, it's the container. But we have to look at the wine. The container, the fresh wine skin or the old wine skin, they can always be made pliable, usable by immersing them in the water, massaging them with the oil and making it pliable to be reused. So my brothers and sisters, we need to focus on the wine, not on the wine container. So we as human persons, we should not be concerned about what nationality we are from, what race we are from, what background we are from, what education we have from. We are all human persons, children of God, made in His image and likeness. What goes inside, in our hearts and in our minds, that's what matters. That wine is the Word of God. And that Word of God would refresh us and make us new persons in Christ Jesus. So my brothers and sisters, let us all become the fresh wineskins, ready to take the word of God, the wine, the fruit of the Lord, always the blood of Christ in us, and we will carry your crosses, and we will follow him until death, so that we seek the crown of righteousness and our journey on this earth is completed. Bye now, my brothers and sisters. Please send in your comments and you know also subscribe. If you are not subscribed, you will get all those 270 uh, videos as of now. Bye now.